Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. In this video, I'm gonna discuss the top seven things I think you should do when it comes to photo printing. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. And if this is the first time you land on this channel, you wanna learn how to do all sorts of things related to photo printing, you're in the right place, my friend. You will learn traditional printing. You will learn how to profile. You will learn how to print on aluminum. Yeah, that's the latest thing, right? Printing on aluminum. How about printing on glass? And I'm gonna show you a few things at the end of the video, so stay tuned and stay with us all the way through. If that is the case, please consider subscribing and click on that bell right there so that you don't miss anything we upload. Now, you're getting into photo printing. You've had the itch. You are a photographer. You maybe worked in the darkroom in the early days using film, chemicals. Maybe you did some color printing at home. Most of us basically just did black and white. But a lot of people, including myself, delved into color printing at home. I worked in many labs in the Army during my 22-year career. And I did get to work in some very, very high-end color labs. So I did kind of master the process. And I lived it, breathed it, and slept it. So anyway, here's what happens often. You get that itch. You want to be able to produce prints at home. You don't want to bother sending your images online to some lab. That's going to take about two to three days to then ship you back a print that you may not find acceptable. It'll likely not match your monitor. And that is the main thing because you spent all that time editing and adjusting those images only to find out that they don't quite match. The nuances that you very painstakingly set up are not there. Well, the only way that you can get that kind of result is to print at home. Well, here's the thing. Often, many, many people will commit the very first mistake. Number one. Don't buy more than you can chew. Do not buy more printer than you can handle. At first, I tell you what, in the case of some things that you first go cheap and then you have to kind of buy again, well, in this case, it's very, very advantageous to go with a lower cost, simpler printer to use. What could that be? Well, it could be one of the Epson Artisan 1430, I believe it's called, six color dye ink printer, wonderful prints, wonderful results, or the Pro 100, Pro 100S in Europe and other countries in the United States, Pro 100s are basically almost given away after rebates. You basically pay the price, which is already low, lower than retail, and then you get about a $250 rebate, and then you also get 50 sheets of paper. That's about $50 right there. So often the net price is about $50 to $100. Start with that. Learn the process and then move up. Number two, do some research before you get into it. Find out what types of printers are out there from, like I said, the lowest end, which would be for me no less than a 1400, 1430. I don't think they make the 1400 anymore. The 1430, 1450. The 15,000, I think it's called in other countries. I'm not sure about that. You'll have to look that up. Or the venerable and the most popular printer in the world right now, the Canon Pro 100. Learn about those types of printers. Learn what's available. Learn what each printer does. Videos, there are tons of videos. I have tons of videos. Do your research. Go to the forums and join and discuss and learn about these printers. Learn what other people are saying about them. Actual users, not just the reviewers on Amazon or other sites. Learn what people who actually own the printers are saying about them and then make your decision. Number three, learn the methodology. Don't assume you know what you're doing. I don't care if you work 30, 40 years in the lab, okay? Wet printing. Yes, you have some ground experience and I did too. And I was able to migrate through the terminology of Photoshop because many of the little icons pertain to the actual operations you did while you were exposing paper. Okay, and then utilities like Lightroom, which basically means you're developing in the light instead of the dark. 
that is a program that is specifically made for photographers. So you might want to consider starting with that rather than something as advanced as Photoshop. Lightroom is perfectly tailored for photography and photographers. But learn, learn the method of editing on a computer. Accept the fact that you have to calibrate your monitor because that's what you're using as a reference to edit your images with. If your monitor is off, then your editing means nothing. So what does that take? Well, it takes a piece of equipment. It's a piece of hardware. You cannot do it with your eyes. You cannot absolutely cannot, unless you have superhuman eyes, you need an instrument that is unbiased and will read your monitor and will actually create a profile that is saved in your computer, which every time you restart your computer, it loads that profile. And now your monitor is displaying colors correctly. And that is something that you need to first accomplish before you even begin to edit. Most monitors out of the box are totally off. So take that to the bank. You need to calibrate your monitor. Number four, this is what a lot of people, they get so excited when they begin. Okay. They start experimenting with multiple types of papers and then they get totally lost. They get lost because there's so many different settings and God forbid you start using ICC profiles without even knowing what they are. You need to learn that process first. I have one paper here that is fantastic. This is Red River's Palo Duro etching and I'm going to be doing a test on this. Finally, I should have it done, hopefully by early next week. I know I promised everyone I would have it this week, but the truth is, and I have to share this with you, I was feeling very, very sick this week. I didn't get much accomplished, but just a few things, and I'm going to show you some of these a little bit later. And then we also had to babysit Nathan. I had to cancel a great visit with a viewer who was here in the neighborhood, and it was just terrible. I couldn't go. I couldn't meet him. We were going to have a great day. And again, because I wasn't feeling well, but that's besides the point. That's just my personal stuff. Some of you will care about that. Some of you will not. But let's continue. Do not get confused by doing testing, testing, testing. That's my job with multiples of papers before you even learn the process, the methodology that you need to master first. And I mean, master it, master the process so you can print on just Canon Pro Luster. Epson, Glossy, Red River, Polar Gloss, whatever the paper you standardize with in the beginning, and it has to be a simple paper to use, use that paper until you fully master it. I want you to be able to say, okay, here's my image I edited. These are my settings that I know are correct because I learned the methodology. Print. And then you just walk away, get some coffee, come back, and of course, the print that came out of your printer will be perfect. It will nearly match your monitor. And don't lose sleep over the fact that your prints are never going to 100% match your monitor. It's just a matter of fact. It's not going to happen. It will be a close representation of the monitor because you're dealing with paper, with a coating, and you're dealing with a monitor that has a backlit system. That's going to be super bright. That's going to be super saturated, super contrasty, lots of dynamic range. The paper lacks that because it has to allow light to pass through the initial ink layers and then bounce back. And it's going to be a lot duller than what you get on the monitor. But keep that in mind and then expect that what you see on paper is always going to be a little bit duller than what you see on the monitor. Ah, uh, and I'm going to tell you later in another video about soft proofing. We're going to cover that again but in a little bit more detail than I did in the previous video. So that's something you need to look out for. So the take home message here is only experiment and work with just a couple of paper types. Don't go crazy. Sure. Go get those sample packs, put them aside. Wait until you master those first two or three simple papers to use a glossy, a luster and a matte. Master that so that again, you get a predictable result and then move on to more exotic papers. By that point, you should know what color management is. You should know how to apply color management. And that will bring you closer to that Nirvana moment where you can match at least 98% what you see in your monitor, what comes out of the printer. That's the goal. Number five, here's, this is the hardest thing to do. Have an open mind and let go of your ego. I can't do that. 
That's very hard for me, but I got to humble myself. I have to listen to other people who know a lot more than me. And I'm not saying that I know a lot more than you. But again, look somewhere, some forum, some group that has what presumably sound or look like experts. Okay. That's ha hard to judge sometimes. But again, go to these places and begin to absorb as much information as you can. Okay. Don't think you know it all. I don't know it all at all. Okay. And I still have to ask other people questions about certain problems that I may come across. That's the biggest deal. Once you get over that hurdle, you will just fly through the process. And in less than a few months, you will be a master at printing. I guarantee it. You need to get rid of that hindrance so that you can then move on and learn and enjoy. The worst thing you want to do is not enjoy photo printing. Get frustrated and God forbid, give up. Okay. Number six, explore the various printing forms. I already mentioned that. There's so many places out there. DP Review, printerknowledge.com, the Mike Cheney form for Q Image, and several others. So you can, you know, just search, join up so that you can then participate. Don't be a lurker. Participate, contribute ask questions. What about my channel? Go to my video comments. Ask me questions. What about my community tab on my main page? Click on that. You don't even have to have community tab on your channel. You can use mine. Go in there. I have a series of choices that you can choose through. And again, ask there. They pertain to many subjects. Ask your questions there. Leave them there. Most of the time, questions that you ask have nothing to do with the video you just viewed. Okay, this is just things that hit you in your head and you wonder about and then you ask them because you watched the video. Go to the community tab and leave those questions there. Everyone else can also access that. And it's got a lot of features. It's sort of like, a, not quite a Facebook, but you know, comes close to that in a way because it allows a lot of interchange of ideas and questions and answers and that sort of thing. I believe you can even post links to videos there. So anyway. Do that or join my Facebook group. Over almost 1,200 subscribers right now on that group. And they all are like-minded people that love photo printing, love photo printers, love the technology. And some of them are advanced and some of them are intermediate and some of them are raw beginners. So there you will find all of the help that you need. Probably better than most of the forums available. Although they are good and I also participate a lot in them. And of course, I'm not going to drop the mic. I'm going to drop the paper. The last and most important thing, this is the take home message. You're going to spend hundreds of dollars on a printer. You're going to spend hundreds of dollars on inks, depending if you stay with OEM, which is the best way to go. If you cannot at all afford that, really consider not getting a printer. That is a harsh statement to make, but I'm being very frank with you. I would not have any of these printers here, maybe one or two. As a hobbyist photographer, that's what I would have. I have a channel dedicated to photo printing. So yeah, I have over 15 printers. I have to have those so that I can physically do things with them and then answer your questions, provide you with videos. When you get a photo printer, commit to it. If you're a type of person who has to travel because of business two, three months, four months out of the year, maybe a printer is not a good choice to have at home. I always use the analogy of a puppy. Say you're a single person and you got a puppy and you can't take that puppy with you. Who's going to feed the puppy? You got to take it to the kennel, right? Well, who's going to run your printer while you are gone? Why do you need to worry about that? Print often. You need to print as often as you possibly can. Just yesterday, I ran all of the purge seats on all of my printers, okay? My R3000 had a clog. Why? I hadn't used it. For how long? I don't even want to tell you, okay? I don't even want to tell you because it was a printer that I was considering converting to sublimation, and I'm still going to do that. I have to obtain a brand new set of refillable cartridges and then just run ink, sublimation ink through there like crazy 
until I cleared the lines and the dampers. But that printer wasn't printing fully. It was missing about maybe, I don't know, 90% of the black and a few other channels. I had to run several cleaning cycles. Cleaning cycle, rest period, nozzle check. Cleaning cycle, rest period, nozzle check. It took me four days to get that printer working again. So now it is working, and now I have to commit to it. I must print on it, okay, as often as possible. So I want to convert that to a different type of printer, sublimation in this case, but I still have to print often on it. So all of your printers that you see here, well, you only see this one. You have to print often. You cannot just buy them and let them sit. I often see these questions. I want to get a printer, but the truth is I will not be printing very often, maybe once or twice every three months. Don't get the printer. Don't. Don't do it. It's a waste of money. A total waste of money. Because it's not going to work for you as you expect it to. It's not like a it's not like your car. Well, even in your car, if you let it sit for three months, you may have a dead battery. Who knows? You know, if you don't use a a instrument with batteries installed, there'll be battery acid all over the inside. You need to use your products. You need to use these prints specifically and especially these printers, okay? They have to be used, and they have to be used often. I can't stress that enough. Oh, but ink costs so much. It will waste more ink money if you don't use your printer, just like I just did. I wasted a good number of dollars running cleaning cycles, trying to get that printer back online. Print prints. Print whatever medium, aluminum. I have one picture here, standard image. We won't get into this because this is another subject. This is color management. Print something every few days, okay? These Canon printers have a different schedule, but the Epsons are not as finicky. Print every few days something, okay? Preferably something that you're going to want to print, all right? I hope you have enough work. Yeah, that's the last thing. Don't get a printer unless you have enough work to feed it with. If you foresee that you are only going to have a few prints a year, don't get the printer. Contact a local lab and have them do the printing for you. And if you have one that's locally, then you can have a better rapport with them and better interchange. And most of them will reprint your print for you for free. So if you don't like it. All right. So let me show you what I've been doing lately. And by the way, this is beautiful paper. I'm going to, I'm going to debut, debut that paper, uh, this early week coming up. Let me bring this back up. This is Palo Duro. No, wrong. This is San Gabriel 1.0, the original stuff. They have switched over to a slightly different type of paper. They call it San Gabriel 2.0. This is Nathan. This is Nathan, October 2016. So right now it's about midsummer 2018. Guess what I printed this with? The Pro 100 Precision Colors inks. So it's now almost two years. Not a bit of perceptible fading can be seen on this. Why? Why am I able to maintain prints without fading printed with so-called volatile ink set? Glass. Glass, and I spray the print with a preserver. All right. Let's quickly take a look at these. As you can see, these are made with glass. These are printed on glass. This is hardboard, coated with sublimation clear coat. You remember this picture, right? Beautiful. Turned out great. I just recently, yesterday, was feeling a little better yesterday evening. I knocked out a couple of tiles here. You can see the back. So these are nice coasters. Nice chili pepper on a mound of um, salt. Star-filled sky. Beautiful shot. I wish I could shoot Stuff like that, I tell you. Gorgeous sunset. I believe this is from Spain. And the last one. And I've done a print of this on regular photo paper. Look at that. Just gorgeous, I tell you. Just gorgeous.
So anyway, that is it for the evening. I will upload this probably maybe tonight, possibly tomorrow morning. We have to go to a funeral, and then we got to go to Nathan's cousin's birthday party, and then I'll be back for the live stream Saturday evening, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, United States. Join us there. I have done pretty huge improvements on the audio. It should be pretty much pristine. And also, I've done a lot with the interface to give you a more pleasant experience as you are watching my live stream. So thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.